a sunny Saturday and the start of the total 24 hours of Spa. A 65 strong grid ready to get the race underway. Red Foot, who would perform the Saturday night concert, was on the grid to have a look at what a GT3 car was all about. Stefan Mucker, the pole position driver, clambered aboard the Beach D and Aston Martin. And after the pace lap, the race got underway. And it nearly didn't last long for some as Alessandro Piedrini knocked his brain out of gear and had this big lose at the top of the hill and very nearly wiped out a goodly number of cars. Alvaro Perez for Hexis was busy battling with Maximilian Goetz in the 84 Mercedes. Those two training places over the line. But Alex Buncombe was an early casualty. That brought out the safety car, and everybody bunched up behind. And the pack was released. We didn't go green for long. Jos Manton had this big accident at the top of Radion. The Lamborghini bouncing off the kerb and thumping into the tyres. He was OK, the car was out of the race, and Hexis was soon in trouble as well with an overheating McLaren, the car limping home as it got cooler, so the pace quickened. No such dramas though for Mark VDS. It's cars running strongly within the top 10 places. For this event, the team was running three. The regular two cars both took turns in the lead early on. Number 14, Mark VDS BMW, just a bit further down the order. Pit stops were cycled through. And running out of sequence after an early pit stop behind the safety car was the HTP Motorsport Mercedes. That therefore had topped up on fuel as other cars pitted, so it rose up the order. And straight away began to look a little bit more of a threat for honours. Number 14, BMW, did not last much longer though. An engine failure put that out. It almost wiped out a Ferrari as Jens Klingman limped off the circuit. Marco Schultz's Porsche was wiped out. He got hit by Carl Wendlinger and that thumped the Porsche off into the barriers. An expensive repair bill for one team, only a drive-through penalty for the aggressor. Patrick Pile made his move around the outside to grab the lead of the race, getting past back markers and also Yelma Berman in one easy move. Berman pitted, he would double stint behind the wheel of the car and Patrick Pile was able to relay Mark Leave a couple of laps later. BMW rejoined, Porsche pitted. Leave took over and then the question was whether he'd be able to rejoin the circuit ahead of Yelma Berman. The answer was no, but it didn't take him long to get back onto the tail of the BMW and mount his attack for the position once again, because as the cars worked their way downhill, a lap or so later towards Poire, Mark Lieb used the traffic to his advantage, managed to box in Yelma Berman and dive through up the inside. Daylight turned to dusk then as the sun set and the cars worked their way into the night, even harder for the teams to go about their business, more stress and with a lack of sleep, even more demanding on them physically. Going into the darkness hours, points were awarded at the six hour mark and the Mark VDS BMW team looking very strong indeed. Sadly though, the cars would wilt during the night. Off track, plenty of distractions to keep the non-race fan entertained. If they did look to the track, they'd see a firework display from Johnny Adam as he brought the Aston Martin into the pit lane. And the picture postcard view of Spa as the cars slogged on into the night. The pit building lights came on, the fireworks started, the concert got into full swing and others enjoyed themselves off track. cars raced on but through the darkness hours inevitably things would start to tell as dawn broke over spa there were fewer sets of headlights blasting out of the chicane there were fewer cars circulating there were fewer people awake the barbecues were lit ready for breakfast but as dawn broke it did so over stranded cars one significantly the linders Berman, Martin BMW out with electrical problems an 84 Mercedes became the race leader ahead of the 150 Porsche the battle between them took us up towards noon, but after that the Porsche started having engine problems, lost a bit of ground, lost a bit of pace. In contrast, number 44 Ferrari was making good progress. It was up at one stage into the top three. More tyre changes for the weary crews to perform down in the pit lane. Ferrari fans well catered for in the total 24 hours of Spa. Race fans well catered for as well as the lead traded once more. Mercedes getting ahead of Porsche on the run downhill. 
McLaren had had a pretty ropey night. Bruno Senna was the better place. McLaren driver and he was tagged into a spin by Pro Speed's Porsche down at the bus stop. That did damage to the diffuser of the car. It was replaced, it fell off, it was replaced again and it fell off again. Audis have been dropping out of the race during the night. No such dramas though for the surviving RJN Nissan. Its only problem was the digital display dropping down off the windscreen. The photographers have had lots of action to snap away at and it continued as Ferrari and BMW got side by side heading down towards La Source and Cesar Ramos in the Ferrari got himself up and past the BMW in the hands of Stefano Colombo. Gulf Racing's mechanics were still trying to catch up on sleep. Not helped by camera crews waking them up now and again. Out on track though, Porsche led from Mercedes. The pattern was emerging as one car pitted, the other took over the lead. And so, as in came the Manti Racing 911 GT3R, so the 84 Mercedes took over the race lead. The way the pit stops would pan out, the Mercedes was looking the stronger car as Andre Lotterer had the brake pads and discs changed, rejoined and properly spun. He should have been able to get going quickly, but the car, in contrast, kangarooed its way into life before electrically it was all reset and it was able to get going again. At pro speed, Xavier Marston was getting ready for his next stint. The 53 Ferrari had an engine problem and dropped back. And another set of Pirellis went on to another car. Through the pit lane came the 84 Mercedes. Back ahead of it once again with the Manti Porsche. The two continuing to trade places right the way around the race. But eventually, Schneider made his move for the race lead. He didn't wait for the Porsche to pit. He went round the outside and did something his two teammates hadn't been able to do. Pass the Porsche. Louis Mackiels had this big, big accident going into a Rouge. A tyre going down as he turned into the corner. Louis was OK, but the car out of the race with a lot of damage. As he lipped away, the safety car was deployed once more by being held at the end of the pit lane so the Manti Porsche went a lap down and that coupled with the down on power engine and occasional loss of performance from cylinders meant that it was never able to really come back into the game. It did unlap itself but did so before that white line you can just see marked across the road the safety car line you can't overtake before it but that is what Patrick Pile did and they got a drive-through penalty for their pains. Enzo Ide charged Ian Docker off the road, a wrecked Audi, a wrecked Ferrari and it meant that those two cars not only were out of the race, but also it brought out the safety car once again. People bunched up. Then Milder's Porsche was dispensed with by the JRM Nissan. That bashed its way into the tyres, but was able to rejoin. Bob Neville bit his nails as he hoped that his Nissan would get to the end. Christopher Meese went round the outside of Frank Keckler to pick up fourth place. Audi ahead of BMW. Disappointed faces in the Vita 4-1 camp. They'd be more disappointed in the last hour and a half as the car ground to a halt in the pit lane. Greg Franchi watching on, but not at all happy. The car would go no further. Michael Bartels commiserated with the team, but also a smoky, indeed flammable Ferrari came in. Kessel Racing, championship leaders coming into the event, saw the car go up in flames at the end of the race for number 44. It gave Audi a podium finish because Andre Lotterer would bring number two to third place. And within the last hour, Van Schneider, with a full tank of fuel, hopped on board with the Mercedes to bring it home for his second Spa 24-hour win. The mechanics could congratulate one another on jobs well done, and they started to get themselves ready for the celebrations. Out of the bus stop, up to the line, victory in the total 24 hours of Spa to Van Schneider, Maximilian Buch and Maximilian Gertz at the end of an impeccable performance from the drivers, from the team, from the car, everything absolutely spot on for the HTP Motorsport team. Congratulations all round. And Bert Schneider standing on top of the car. The drivers made their way up towards the podium and it has been another superb race in the total 24 hours of Spa's history. From all of us at Spa, we hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Join us at the Nürburgring for the final round of the championship for now. It's time for a Belgian beer and goodbye.